starts right now. All right, we are taking a live look, or at least whatever you can look out there. We can see some headlights on the road, but I mean, we look, we were a family here on GMSC Weekends. We got an early morning text from Sarah Spivey saying, be cautious out there. There is heavy fog, and she was not wrong. This is crazy. We're going to check in with her in just a few moments. Hey, but RJ, what can you tell us about what's going on near Loop 1604 and I-10? Well, it's going to be another busy weekend on the northwest side for our drivers. We're talking about holiday shopping and all sorts of things happening around the rim. But something that you need to know before you head out on the roads this weekend, we're going to see more work being done. The 1604 and I-10 interchange and that expansion area. So I'm going to move out of the way, kind of show you exactly what we're working with here. The west and eastbound lanes will be closed in the area for about a three mile stretch. So right now what you're looking at is the westbound lanes. The main lanes will be closed from the Bitters Road exit ramp to Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. Ramp. The eastbound lane closure, as we move to this other graphic right here, showing you the eastbound lanes, uh, that closure will extend from the Vance Jackson Road exit ramp to the Bitters entrance ramp. That's about three and a half miles. And that is not all. The exit ramp off I-10 West 10 leading to eastbound Loop 16 to 4 will be closed, as well as the Cloverleaf exit from I-10 East to eastbound 1604. So these closures are going to take place starting at 9 p.m. on Friday, and they're going to last through 5 a.m. on Monday. So take caution if you are in the area. Now, off-duty officers will also be there in that area to help direct traffic. Make sure you guys stay safe and have a good one. Thank you, RJ. All right, it is 6 o'clock, 601. It is Saturday, December 9th. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Good morning. Happy to be here. <sighs> so happy to be here. We're going to be talking about the garden throughout the show. Right. But today we can't even see the garden. I mean, you look out no. there, can't see anything. I'm so glad that we have Sarah, who, one, gets in a little earlier than us because she has to forecast. But she always gives us a heads up about the weather yeah. and on the roads this morning. Guys, it is a little foggy out there. In fact, I could not see 30 feet in front of my car on the highway as I was coming into work. So in some spots that fog is dangerously dense. Take a look at 35 at Knight Street. You can see that fog out there as the cars are trying to work, make their way across the city here early this morning. Dense fog in places. Use caution. Use the low beams rather than the high beams uh, on your car and make sure to give yourself plenty of distance. Even though it's in the 60s right now, visibility is practically zero at the airport. Down to four miles in New Braunfels, down to eight miles in Seguin down half a mile in Bernie, zero visibility in Kerrville. Notice how much cooler it is in Kerrville. It's 51 in Kerrville this morning. We do expect to see a cold front move through today, but until that front moves through, dense fog is the main weather story. Dense fog advisory for all of these counties in gray here until nine o'clock. Now, here's a look at your weekend forecast. So this morning fog will be clearing and we'll get into the 70s. A front is going to move through and that is gonna make it very windy tonight. We're talking wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. So take today, secure those lightweight Christmas decorations outside. Tomorrow morning will be cold 41, but wind chills in the 30s, 60 degrees and sunny tomorrow. And then by Monday morning, our first light freeze of the season. I'll tell you what that means for your plants coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Sarah, thank you. In your Texas headlines, a Texas woman's lawsuit over her right to an abortion is headed to the state Supreme Court. So Thursday, a state judge ruled she can end a pregnancy her doctors have deemed non-viable. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has filed a petition to overturn that court order. The 31-year-old mother of two from Dallas says her baby was diagnosed with a fatal genetic condition, saying her pregnancy puts both her life and her future ability to have children at risk. Texas law makes an exception for saving the life of the mother, but her attorney says the state doesn't think her client qualifies. And not once has the state told us what they think the exception means. They just keep telling us it's clear, but yesterday was the first time that they said, ah, this isn't enough. This isn't close enough to death. And I, Attorney General Paxton, want to be the one to decide. Paxton sent a letter to three hospitals at which Cox's doctor has privileges. It says in part that the judge's order would, quote, not insulate you or anyone else from civil and criminal liability from violating Texas abortion laws, end quote. This case is still pending. 
Well, it's a problem that we talk about a lot, drinking and driving. And a new report from Forbes showing that Texas is the third worst state across the country for drunk driving just this year. So we're not like other shows. We actually dove into the research. We found that all 50 states were compared in this research across six key metrics to determine which states had the highest rates, not the highest number, the highest rates of driving under the influence. Data shows, get this, nearly 42% of all traffic deaths here in the Lone Star State caused by drunk drivers. And our state, well, we had the third highest rate of underage drunk drivers involved in deadly crashes. That's not under 18, that is under the age of 21. Last month, an analysis from buyautoinsurance.com found Austin, El Paso, here in San Antonio, and Houston, all of them in the top five cities for worst cities for drunk driving. A Vietnam veteran from College Station, Texas, recently received an honor that was more than five decades overdue, 56 years after being ambushed and wounded while carrying out a search to and destroy mission in South Vietnam, Army medic Sertani Carpio has finally been awarded a Purple Heart. He says while 56 years is a long time, he came close to losing hope, but is so thankful that he didn't. As soon as I got that letter and I started reading it, I was ecstatic. You know, once I sent off that letter from Waco, I said, well, if I don't get it now, I'm just, that's going to be it. But I got it. Thank God. A local veterans group held a public ceremony this week in Bryan, Texas, to acknowledge Carpio's journey. A billionaire philanthropist, and you may know her as Jeff Bezos' former wife, Mackenzie Scott, she's given $1.5 million to a San Antonio nonprofit, the nonprofit Project Quest. This is the largest private donation in this workforce training company's 31 year history. So, in case you don't know, Project Quest is in charge of connecting San Antonians who are dealing with poverty, connecting them to emerging careers through skill training programs. Now, the nonprofit's board says they are still working, still meeting, still trying to decide how to use this generous donation. Time now, 607, 65 degrees. National Park Service has released its free admission days for next year. Lace up those hiking boots. After the break, we'll tell you which days. Good morning and welcome back. All right, the National Park Service releasing its la list of free admission days for next year, 2024. Martin Luther King's birthday, January 15th, the first day of National Park Week, which, if you didn't know, April 20th, Juneteenth on June 19th, the anniversary of the Great American Outdoors Act, August 4th, National Public Lands Day on September 28th, and Veterans Day, of course, November 11th. Several great national parks around San Antonio, the Missions, LBJ, Historical Park. There's a lot going on, and I gotta say, Sarah, looking outside right now, doesn't seem like it's gonna be a park day so far. <laughs> right, and so far, but we are going to look at clearing skies today because a cold front is gonna move through, but that front is going to be the first of a series of changes that we're gonna need to prepare for this weekend. So I've got to look at your weather to-do list too. Yes, I made a to-do list. There's a honey-do wow. list. That's <laughs> on brand for me if you don't know me. Let's take a look outside right now. Here's the fog. The first thing on your to-do list, be careful if you're driving this morning. Here's a look at 98 couples. You can see that fog is very dense. In fact, here's a look at visibility across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Del Rio, down to five miles in Pleasanton, down to one mile in Catula, down to zero in Kerrville and in San Antonio. Let's zoom into the metro area here. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile on the west side near Port SA, down to less than two miles at JBSA Randolph, down to three quarters of a mile at Stinson, down to half a mile in Bernie and down to zero in Castroville. So you are going to want to give yourself a little extra space if you're planning on driving early this morning. But by 9, 10, that fog is going to lift. And the reason for that is we expect a cold front in the mid morning hours. That's going to bring in some dry air. Now it's still going to be pleasant this afternoon as far as temperatures go in the upper uh, mid to upper 60s. So even a little on the warm side and sunny. But watch how the winds kick in later on today. We're talking wind sustained at about 20 to 25 miles per hour later on today. So you are going to notice the winds by the afternoon and especially in the evening. Temperatures will fall under clear skies and with those north winds uh, out of 25 miles per hour, they're going to gust even higher. This is a look at the potential wind gusts later on tonight, closer to midnight. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour in and around South Central Texas and the San Antonio metro area. We're going to continue to see the wind gusts overnight up to 30
35, 40 miles per hour. So you'll probably be hearing that wind howling overnight. Make sure to secure those Christmas inflatables. By tomorrow morning, we're still going to be dealing with wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. Temperatures will be in the 40s, but it's going to feel like it's in the 30s. So we're going from right now where temperatures are in the mid 60s into the 40s early tomorrow morning, but it'll feel like it's in the 30s with the winds from the north. Now winds will be calming during the day tomorrow so that by the afternoon we're not going to have too much of a wind. So that brings us to our next thing to talk about. Again, with that front moving through our morning low of 41 tomorrow with a high of 60. But with calming winds and clear skies, our first light freeze of the season is likely on Monday morning. Now right now we're only forecasting 32 in San Antonio, but that is still enough to need to take some freeze precautions, particularly for your plants. Now, there is not going to be any precipitation with this light freeze, so it's just going to be cold in the morning on Monday. This is a look at the potential morning lows Monday morning from about 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. You can see that areas like Del Rio and Eagle Pass probably just likely above freezing, but Yavali, Hondo, Rock Springs, Kerrville, Pleasanton, all going to be at 32 or less, and that goes for the city of San Antonio, too. Neighborhoods up in the hill country could dip down in to the upper 20s like Bernie, Kerrville and New Braunfels. So what is your weekend weather to do list today? Secure those outdoor Christmas decorations because again, the winds are going to be picking up later on tonight. You don't want to be searching for that inflatable snowman uh, come Sunday morning. So Sunday during the day, you can prep for that light freeze on Monday morning. What does that mean? Potted plants need to be brought inside and you need to keep your pets warm. In fact, Sarah did a great video on social media about which plants need to be brought in because of that light freeze early on Monday morning. The next thing to talk about in the forecast looks like we could see a little bit of rain Wednesday through Friday. I'll have those details coming up in the next half hour. Sarah, thank you. Pets enjoy the holidays, maybe a little too much coming up. We have some ways to keep your pets safe this holiday season. Do you get your pets <clears throat> Christmas gifts? Oh, they have stockings. Of course they do. <laughs> All right. Mike Ozer Edge with the Animal Defense League showing us a sweet pet that needs a warm home for the holidays. Well, Felicia is here, and <laughs> what's interesting is this little kitty cat was a little kind of you know, iffy at first, mm -hmm. and now really settled down. Yeah, he's warming up. Yeah, beautiful He's green so eyes, and oh my gosh, this fur is literally like silk. This is the softest yes. little kitty cat. I know, he's so adorable, and he's very stocky. I know you can't really tell right now the way I'm holding him, but he's a stocky little boy. He is three months old. Uh, he was transferred from Animal Care Services, our city shelter, and he is now officially available for adoption. So if anyone is looking for a kitty, I think he would be fantastic. Can you imagine him with a little red bow right there? But remember, when it comes to Christmas, they're not gifts, they're yes. lifelong commitments. But Definitely. You're awfully cute with those green eyes. What y'all got going on? Well, we have our Second Chances fundraising campaign going on right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is end of year giving. So if anyone is able to support all of our pets and services that we're able to offer all of these amazing babies, please visit adltexas.org. You can read all about the pets that we've helped this year year and just find out more about our organization and how you can help whether it's volunteering, fostering, adopting of course, or donating. Anything would be amazing. We truly appreciate all of the support. And don't forget to, along with all of that, the Amazon wish list, a couple of yes. clicks goes right to them. Exactly. Nice and, you don't even have to make the trip. Yeah. <laughs> don't even have to wrap a gift to put it underneath yeah. the tree. So, well, if you'd like more information about all the ways that you can help out the Animal Defense League or this, what was his name again? This is Cobbler. Cobbler. Yeah. Oh, great name. <laughs> Let me think of Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Holiday decorations are a fun way to celebrate the season, but they could also be dangerous to our beloved pets. Oh, our MJ Inach explains how even holiday flowers can give your pet a gift that is not on their wish list. For pet owners, especially cat owners, the holidays are a time of high alert to make sure their pets aren't ingesting the very decorations we love so much. If you have curious pets, it can be difficult um, to keep them safe. So. 
The holidays bring new hazards like Christmas trees, whether they're real or fake, um, and even table scraps and things of that nature. So um, just trying to blockade as best you can and keep those pets away from the hazards and just be mindful of them is really important. Unfortunately for flower lovers, the ones that are popular during the holidays are some of the most toxic kinds for cats and dogs. We have a lot of flowers around the holidays that people love. Poinsettias, lilies um, are two of some of the most poisonous flowers to cats. And even just a little bit of pollen could cause damage. Um, kidney damage is the biggest issue that you would see with them getting into those plants. There are options though that allow us to decorate how we want without putting our pets in danger. So as a general rule of thumb, I tell people you love flowers, get the fake stuff. They're still probably gonna chew it, but chewing a little bit of plastic or fabric is much better than them chewing the actual flower because they will have to spend time at the vet in the emergency and hopefully make it, but some of them don't. MGI and Notch case at 12 News. All right, time now, 622, 65 degrees. I gotta ask before we go, uh, we must. Is it hot or cold coffee today? Oh, hot. Hot coffee, okay. Yeah, even though it's muggy outside, it's hot. Right. Okay, so while we don't want our pets eating anything holiday-like, what about us? What are we gonna enjoy? We have some suggestions on how to stay on track coming into the new year. I'm ready, way off track. I don't know why you looked at me. I feel a little offended. Because I, I feel like you're a bad influence. You're like, oh, How it's my fine. Bad enjoy influence. it. Enjoy it. All right. This is going to be tough <laughs> because it's hard to talk about wellness For at who? this time of the year. For you? Well, Max because is so it's, on track, it's like guys. The, you overindulge during the holidays. It's easy. It's family. It's food. Our producers are telling us to read because we're running out of time. So over the next few weeks, you're likely to get tempted. I was tempted. Pumpkin pie. I'm tempted every day. Gets you off track, especially when it comes to your health. Well, experts say it's okay to enjoy the holidays in moderation. It's important to also come back to those healthy habits. So in today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has some ways to have healthy and happy holiday seasons. It's a season of joy, but also holiday goodies, gatherings, and many times overindulgence. People sort of fall off the wagon, as, as most people would say, um, when it comes to their diet, um, sleep, and exercise in particular. When you get off a healthy track, it can be hard to hop back on. But there's one thing that can help, says Dr. Barbara Bauer with the Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center. Just say no. That's sort of my slogan. Bauer says to enjoy the holidays in moderation, but avoid excess food and alcohol. I think sometimes we get pressured to eat or, or, or maybe drink things with family members or friends. But again, OK to say no. Say yes to exercise. Continue being active this holiday season. Try to eat healthy throughout the day, especially before a gathering when you might indulge in a favorite treat. Next, focus on getting good quality sleep. They go to sleep late, they wake up early, or uh, a combination of those factors. You throw in some alcohol, maybe more alcohol than they typically consume. That can alter your sleep too. Finally, Bauer says to lighten your holiday schedule. You don't need to go to every gathering or run yourself ragged trying to see everyone. To try to minimize some of that stress that can come with holidays. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Dr. Barr says this holiday season also takes some time to focus on yourself. She says self-care, another critical component of health, whether it's doing a hobby or just having some alone time, do something that makes you happy over the holidays. Time now, 627, 65 degrees. We got a lot going on out there. Yeah, we're tracking a couple of crashes and backup congestion at some areas like 90 at Couples because of this fog. I'm assuming that it is causing some difficult with people driving this morning. We're gonna give you updated on the fog and your weekend forecast may come back. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend, 631. It is Saturday, it is December 9th and Bring you into the newsroom a little bit, or at least the text chain. We got a text, what, 3.30 this morning? Yeah, uh, Sarah Spivey, she's on it. She said, hey guys, there's some really 
gnarly fog out there. Yeah. That's how she described it. It's pretty dense out there and it's causing some severe backup and crashes in our area. Sarah, what, yeah. what, what, what do you know about this fog and what are we seeing out on the roads because of it? We are having dense fog where it's hard to see even 30 feet in front of Ooh. you and unfortunately it's creating some accidents, uh, crashes rather. This is 90 at Couples. You can see just how backed up this is. The crashes at Zarzamora though, but it's backed up all the way to Couples and beyond. It, this traffic is at a complete standstill. It doesn't even look like first responders are allowing these cars to get around the crash. So we know that this is going to cause some major issues. If you are heading out early this morning, check your route before because this is going to cause a backup. And I would assume for a while here too. The uh, highway there at 90 at Couples is at a complete standstill. We've also got a crash to talk about. Uh, this is I-10 at the Y. You can see that uh, right at that fine silver curve there, which is often an issue for for semis. This is a, a stalled semi truck here. It does look like first responders are on the scene, but by far, I think the biggest issue on the roads right now is 90 at couples. So again, please use caution. We are going to get some more information about these crashes. Uh, Sarah? truck is trying to make its way through the emergency yeah. lane to get to whatever that situation is where you can see those you know sh um, flashing lights earlier there so it looks like they're trying to get this traffic flowing hopefully right. soon but we will continue to keep you posted for now this is what it looks like at the airport very difficult to see outside right now because visibility is practically zero around san antonio meaning you can only see a few yards out in front of you if you have to drive this morning use extra caution use those low beams not the high beams the high beams scatter the light and actually make it more difficult for you to see be very very cautious. This fog, however, is eventually going to clear out by mid morning, and that's because we have a cold front on our doorstep. This cold front is going to be ushering in drier air, and so by the afternoon, it's going to be totally sunny. It's going to be windy, and by the evening, it's going to be cold. Take a look at temperatures behind this front in the 20s in parts of the Rockies. A lot to talk about in the forecast. First of all, the dense fog this morning will show you updates to the traffic map. We've also got windy conditions tonight with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. So secure those outdoor Christmas decorations today. And then I want to talk about a brief light freeze Monday morning. I'll show you which neighborhoods will be reaching and freezing and what you should do to prepare for the light freeze Monday morning coming up. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Former Spurs player Josh Primo will not face indecent exposure charges after a former team psychologist accused him of doing that several times last year. In a statement, the Bear County DA's office explained there was insufficient evidence to prove the allegations and that their office must be able to prove each element of a criminal offense beyond a reasonable doubt to pursue those charges. And sticking with the courts and your morning headlines, an appeals court partially upholding the gag order against former President Donald Trump in his federal election subversion case. So that panel ruling that Trump can be barred from talking about witnesses or prosecutors. Now that gag order, however, does not apply to comments the former president made about special counsel Jack Smith, which is different from the original order issued in the Washington, D.C. District Court. And the Republican National Committee says GOP presidential candidates can take part in any debate that they want to. So the RNC says it doesn't have any party sponsored presidential debates scheduled for January. So candidates can participate in others. The decision comes after several candidates criticized the exclusivity pledge. ABC News will host a debate in New Hampshire days after the Iowa caucuses. OK, now to the drama in the NCAA. It's been kind of the wild, wild west, especially when it comes to NIL and the possibility of paying players. Well, the NCAA wants to split the highest level of collegiate sports by dividing tier one to directly compensate athletes. Yes, paying players. NCAA president Charlie Baker says a split would also help address disparities in various school resources. We know that firsthand here at UTSA. He says colleges in the subdivision would work on new rules for that group and they'd have to provide funding for at least half their eligible athletes. If adopted, these new rules could have a big impact on the wide range of policies from scholarships, transfers and NIL or as we commonly refer to it, name, image and likeness revenue. 
All right, a new report from research group Japan 101 reveals that the Houston Texans is the cheapest NFL team oh. to support. Sorry, Cowboys fans. All right, so data shows fans spend an average of $380 for tickets, food, and merchandise at NRG Stadium. The Cowboys place 28 mm. on the list with fans spending an average of, oh my gosh, an average of $900 a game. So just to be clear, that is the third most expensive team is the Cowboys. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so the most expensive team, Max, mm. it's a fan. It, it's if you're going to be a Raiders fan okay, with an average of $1,300 spent by fans. It makes sense because they're in California. No, no, no. Raiders, Vegas. Oh, I'm sorry. Vegas, Raiders. Vegas. Gotcha. Vegas, Vegas. You were close. Used to be California, <laughs> though. And everything's new. I get it. And you're in Vegas. Does it matter? Well, also, the Cowboys, I mean, everyone wants to be a Cowboys fan. So, of course, it's expensive. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> All right. In your morning money news, data from personal finance website, WalletHub. One of our fan favorites here ranks San Antonio as the ninth least sustainable city in America for credit card debt. Makes sense. Wild Hub looked at 200 cities across the United States based on credit card balances for residents last month. So this is very recent. For the Alamo City, the median credit card debt is, get this, more than $3,000 with the average payoff time being almost eight years. But we're not alone. Out of 200 cities, El Paso placed second Brownsville. Place in sixth, and Dallas, well, they're at the top of a lot of lists this morning. They are number 11. Okay, here's some good news. Mortgage rates have dropped for seven straight weeks, and we are now at the lowest level since August. Freddie Mac says the 30-year fixed mortgage rate fell this week to just over 7%. That's down from 7.2% last week. By comparison, last year, the average rate was at 6.3%. Not close to that 2.9 in the pandemic. All right. Most people may not be happy with the economy. Makes sense. Everything's more expensive. You're probably not making enough to compensate, but still planning to open their wallets this holiday season. A new Gallup poll showing consumers are estimating they're going to spend an average. Who are these consumers? Because this is not me. Numbers show that people spend on average $975 on gifts this year. Mm. That's $100 more from what they predicted a year ago. It is also the highest average holiday shopping budget since Gallup began measuring this back in 1999. Okay, according to the Federal Reserve statistics through the first half of the year, the top 1% of American earners now control more wealth than the nation's entire middle class. Yeah, because here in the middle class, we're spending $975 on holidays. Oh, or struggling to get a debt, you know, all that stuff or mortgage rates, the amounts to almost $40 trillion split among America's wealthiest. That includes billionaires Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, and also many multimillionaires who are low profile, mm. best way to be. But the data doesn't necessarily mean everyone else is getting poor. It just shows rich people are getting richer. Faster. Faster, mm. there you go. Here we are. Time now, just about 640, 65 degrees. Could the Elmo City see snow oh, on Christmas? Our own Sarah Spivey on the screen. Sarah Spivey will let us know coming up. And today on Texas Seats, David Elder heads to Austin. Ooh, we got tacos on Rainy Street. Have you seen his uh, his holiday cards for his family? No. His son Bo is, it looks like a model. Oh my gosh. It's I, So cute. Adorable. All right, we have a preview after the break. All right, let's take a look at live cam. Here is the big situation that we're really focusing on this morning, especially Sarah, the dense fog across our viewing area, causing some major crashes in our area, like at 90 and couples, 10 at the Y. We're gonna have an update on all that when we come back. Brisket. Now, you said you've been making this for a long time for yeah. friends. What's your secret, man? What are you doing? Low and slow. It's Texas. You can't mess with it too much. Uh, we actually don't trim our brisket at all. We want all those fatty bits. We cook it 12 hours. Everything's breaking down. And we mix the whole brisket together with spices, seasoning blend, and then that's what you get. <laughs> that's the bite. Bro! I love the quality of the flour tortilla. You do have the option to dunk this again, salsa verde. You also have guacamole on the side, queso on the I'm a queso well. dunker. You're that's, yeah, that's my move. It's right. dirty, Ready? but you, you go right in there, yeah. How that's much? the move. Okay, cheers. <laughs> is that cheese or is that like a sauce? I think, it, I think both. it's a cheese sauce. Yes. Yeah. Why not both? Why not both? Exactly. Oh my gosh, yes. 
Okay, Sarah. Yes. Tacos. A lot I, of people, I, I know people like to like get clicks and stuff and say that there's going to be snow on Christmas, but you're here to tell the truth. I gotta be honest. Tell us the Just truth, Just call me Sarah, Sarah Scrooge Spivey, oh. okay? <laughs> the chances of it happening here in the Alamo City are slim to none. Okay. So as we gear up for Christmas, I'm gonna break down the actual chances of getting snow on the ground. Are you dreaming of a white Christmas in San Antonio in the Hill Country? Well, keep on dreaming. I hate to be a Grinch, but the odds of a white Christmas in San Antonio are only one in a thousand. Those odds are similar to if you went to the grocery store, picked up an egg and cracked it open and found two yolks. Not impossible, but just not very likely. But back in 2004, San Antonio came close. There was a lot of snowfall on Christmas morning for areas like Corpus Christi, Galveston, and Victoria, and even in the Valley. The Alamo City has never seen a white Christmas in its recorded history, but we still get plenty cold. In fact, just last year in 2022, we had our second coldest Christmas ever, when in the morning, the thermometer reached 22 degrees. But of course, it can also get plenty warm too. The hottest Christmas we've ever had, it got up to 90. So what does this Christmas have in store? Well, we still got to wait for that forecast. Make sure to follow your weather authority. We'll have your latest Christmas forecast details on air, online, and on our KSAT Weather Authority app. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Christmas this year is just outside of our 2020 vision for the forecast, but I'm pretty certain we're not going to have a white Christmas in San Antonio. But, you know, we've got plenty else to talk about about the weather this weekend, guys. First of all, the crashes out there oh my because gosh, of the yeah. fog. This is 90 at couples, and you can see that we are still dealing with this major backup wow. here. These are the eastbound lanes of 90 at couples, backed up all the way to Zarsamora. You can see the flashing lights of the first responders there on scene, but still nobody is getting by on the eastbound lanes of uh, 90 at Couples. Here's a look at that on the map. It's just uh, to the west of downtown, the eastbound lanes of Couples, start of 90 rather, at Couples, starting to get backed up all the way to uh, General McMullen. So be very cautious if you have to use 90 today, maybe find another route early this morning because that crash is still there. Also want to take a look at some backups here along I-10 as you're heading into downtown. We'll go ahead and take a look at that on, on the trans guide image uh, at camera 16. I believe MJ is what that camera image is and you can see here it is. This is a uh, trailer that has ended up uh, backed up here. This is the fine silver curve and you can see that that is backed up completely. At least there's a tow truck on the scene hoping to get this semi off of there. It's an Amazon truck so a lot of people's Christmas gifts going to eventually get to there. But again, we'll take a last look at a uh, camera three where we've got another backup here or cam there we go. This is 35 at Flores and you can see first responders on the scene here, a backup along 35 as a lot of people are likely running to, to issues because of the fog. Visibility is down to practically zero in the city of San Antonio. Give yourself extra space as you're traveling this morning and go slow. Use the low beams. Visibility down to quarter of a mile in Del Rio and in Kerrville, down to six miles in New Braunfels, a closer view around the city, down to a quarter of a mile on the west side, down to zero at Castroville. So dense fog everywhere around San Antonio right now, but the fog will only last for a couple more hours because a cold front is on our doorstep and it's going to sweep away the mugginess in the fog and bring in some very dry air. So when we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, fog, Yes, this morning, some mist absolutely this morning, but by 10 11, that's when we're going to start to see skies clear as that front moves through and brings in the drier air. We'll actually get up into the upper 70s right around 2 o'clock this afternoon before temperatures cool down a little bit. Later on this afternoon is going to get windy after about 4 p.m. That's when the winds are really going to start to pick up and temperatures will fall. How windy will we get? Well, tonight winds are going to be gusting up to 40 miles per hour in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning winds will gust up to 30 miles per hour. So it's time to bring out the frosty meter. I'm naming this inflatable snowman frosty. If you have Christmas inflatables, Frosty is going to be at the North Pole if you don't secure those inflatables tonight because again, gusts of up to 40 miles per hour are possible. Then 
as we transition into the week, the thing I want you to pay attention to is early Monday morning. Monday morning, we're likely going to see our first light freeze of the season for San Antonio. Now, we don't need to worry about icy precipitation or anything like that. This is just a light freeze, a little bit behind schedule. We usually see our first light freeze by the end of November, but it's time to start thinking about bringing in those potted plants. If you live in areas that are expected to see a freeze early Monday morning from about 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., Yavali, Rock Springs, Hondo, Pleasanton, New Braunfels, Del Rio should be just above freezing. And then around San Antonio, all locations are expected to see a freeze. It may even get up in the 20s in areas like Bernie, Bulverde, Kerrville. Here's the thing. You don't need to worry about pipes. Pipes, it's not going to be that cold. The things that I want you to consider is bringing in and covering up sensitive vegetation. That includes potted plants, citrus trees, tropical plants, those kinds of things. And then also, please remember your pets. We want to make sure they have a warm place to be. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is that rain is looking more likely Wednesday through Friday of this upcoming forecast week. So again, there's a lot to talk about. So let's recap it. Tonight, gusty winds of up to 40 miles per hour. Tomorrow, starting off chilly, a high of 60 degrees. Tomorrow, go ahead and bring those plants in because by Monday morning, that's when I expect that light freeze in San Antonio and the Hill Country. And then our attention turns to the shot at rain Wednesday through Friday. We need rain. We're in drought. Sometimes it's hard to for, it's hard to remember that in the winter, we still need rain. Absolutely. And that's the case Wednesday through Friday. And maybe do a deep watering for some of your plants outside before that light freeze. But head to our KSAT Instagram page where I posted a video about what to bring indoors, what to leave outside, what to cover, and what not to cover. It's very informative. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Well, we're going to go back out to Transga because we have another crash. This one at I-10 and Frio. And we've been talking about it through the morning. We had that standstill at 90 in couples and then I-10 at the Y. So... If you are, there's I ten, yeah, there's ten at the Y. So if you are out and about, make sure to be safe this morning. Drive smart. As things pop up, we will keep you posted. We'll be right back. Brownsville native Texas judge Irma Carillo Ramirez has been confirmed as the first Latina on the U.S. Appeals Court after being nominated by President Joe Biden. The Senate voted 80 to 12 for the for, for the North Texas magistrate judge to the New Orleans based appeals court, which handles cases from Texas, Louisiana and Mississippi. Way to go, Judge Ramirez. From rise to congressman to fallen diva, as they all say. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Botox keeps you young, fillers keeps you plump. <laughs> so if this man looks familiar. This is the former Congressman George Santos, just expelled from Congress. And he has actually found a way to earn more money in the last few days via cameo than he has during his entire congressional record, which wasn't that long. So cameo, if you don't know, is a celebrity video message platform. And so each video from the former congressman costs up to $500, which is actually kind of crazy because I think they started at $75 and there was a huge surge and they're selling out quickly. So for the holiday season? No, you're you, not getting a cameo. <laughs> I'm not paying for that cameo. You're going to get a cameo and it's going to be hilarious. Oh, I'm going to get one? Yeah, it's not going to be him because I'm not spending $500. I was like, you yeah. would spend $500? No. Okay. <laughs> On you, maybe. I know, I know. Friend things, time now, <laughs> 656, 65 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, just a reminder that the fog is very dense outside. And this is a stark reminder. This is 90 eastbound at Couples, and you can see how backed up the traffic is at a standstill. It does look like first responders are trying to get people off of the highway, but it is difficult. So be careful this morning. Fog will be clearing mid-morning, 77 today, getting windy tonight, gusts up to 40 miles per hour, cold tomorrow morning, and then cool in the afternoon near 60. That brings us to our first light freeze of the season on Monday. Monday morning, then our attention turns to the possibility for rain Wednesday through Friday. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, stay with us because we'll be back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. As you can see, you really can't see much. 
Uh, this morning in our six o'clock hour, there were three major crashes that shut down major roadways. We know at least one of them have cleared. We're actually going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few minutes, not to even talk about traffic, but also talk about when will this fog clear. But for now, good morning. It is Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Good morning. And yeah, we talked about it earlier. We woke up to that text from Sarah Spivey warning us that the roads were going to be tricky this morning because of that dense fog. Yeah, she said, hey guys, we have some dense fog and I, yeah. Sarah, it got better the closer we got to downtown, but when we started the show, I think it almost got worse. Yeah, it, the fog was really, really bad. Uh, Pre-dawn, we saw a lot of crashes out there. As my, I came into work, I could barely see 30 feet in front of my car. This is the scene of one of those crashes. This is 90 East at Couples. You can actually see that they, the first responders there are pulling the car from the side of the road there back onto uh, the median. It looks like it ended up... Uh, spinning out of control, but this highway was completely backed up during the six to seven o'clock hour. Thankfully, they've cleared the highway, but again, the fog is is nothing to mess with, and there's a little bit of dampness out there too from some areas of mist and drizzle. So please use caution. This is a look at the airport right now, and you can see that that fog is still fairly dense. We've got visibility down to less than a quarter of a mile at the airport as temperatures this morning are right near 65. It's 67 uh, in New Braunfels. Uh, it's 69 in Seguin, but really visibility is lowest around areas like Bernie and Kerrville. Visibility less than a mile, so please use caution this morning. Dense fog advisory until nine o'clock. It's after nine o'clock that we expect to see the fog really clear because a cool front is going to move through. That's going to allow for a sunny day and a high of 77, so a little on the warm side this afternoon. But with that front moving through by tonight, winds are going to be gusting up to 40 miles per hour. Secure those Christmas decorations today. Those outdoor Christmas decorations, you do not want to be fishing for them by tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, it's going to be fairly chilly at 41 degrees early tomorrow morning, but 60 for the high and plenty sunny. It isn't until Monday morning, though, that we expect our first light freeze of the season. Sunday night into Monday, 32. I'm going to show you how cold it's going to be in your neighborhood. And of course, I'm going to give you a weekend weather to do list to prepare for the winds today and the light freeze Monday morning. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, charges against the former Spur, Josh Primo, those charges dismissed. The Bear County District Attorney's Office releasing a statement saying, in part, there was inefficient, insufficient evidence to prove the allegations made against Primo. Remember, back in 2022, Primo was accused of exposing himself to a then Spurs performance psychologist. Now, the evidence for each charge in this case was reviewed according to the DA's office, by more than one prosecutor, and they concluded that the prosecutor's burden of proof could not be met, and that's why they explained the case had to be dismissed. And a man has been found guilty in a drive-by shooting that killed a four-year-old boy in July of 2017. Yesterday, Quentin Phillips is guilty of murder. He was the first of three men to face murder charges in the 2017 drive-by shooting death of four-year-old to Earl Vion Whitley. Just last Friday, the prosecution offered Phillips a 40-year sentence plea deal. He rejected it now with a guilty verdict. Quinton Phillips faces up to life in prison. Now, one of the top stories across the country and across Texas, a woman's lawsuit over her right to an abortion is headed to the state Supreme Court. On Thursday, a state judge ruled that she can end a pregnancy her doctors have deemed non-viable. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson has filed a petition to overturn that court order. 31-year-old Kate Cox is 20 weeks pregnant. She says her baby was diagnosed with a fatal genetic condition. Now Cox's lawsuit also saying continuing her pregnancy not only puts her life at risk, but also puts the future ability to have children at risk. Texas law does make an exception for saving the life of the mother, Cox's attorney says the state doesn't think her client qualifies. And not once has the state told us what they think the exception means. They just keep telling us it's clear. But yesterday was the first time that they said, ah, this isn't enough. This isn't close enough to death. And I, Attorney General Paxton, want to be the one to decide. So in the meantime, Paxton sent a letter to the three hospitals at which Cox's doctors are privileged to practice. That letter says in part that the judge's order would, quote, not insulate you or anyone else from civil and criminal liability for violating Texas's abortion laws, end quote.
The battle over the border buoys in the Rio Grande continues this weekend. Last week, a federal court ruled to uphold a lower court's order to remove them. Governor Greg Abbott is continuing to push back, saying the state is going to petition that latest ruling and has a backup plan if the appeals court is if the appeal is rejected by the court. Abbott says the state will take it to the Supreme Court. Now, with the help of Operation Lone Star, Abbott is installing new anti-barrier climb walls that are eight feet tall, gates strung together, and a razor in the and, and wrapped in razor wire. Well, headed to Michigan, that 17-year-old school shooter in the state of Michigan. Remember, he killed four of his schoolmates, wounded six more back in 2021. Well. Court showed he will now spend the rest of his life in prison, no chance of parole. That sentence just handed down yesterday afternoon after the teen listened to a day's worth of the victim impact statements. The 17 year old pleaded guilty last year in the shooting deaths of those four students inside Oxford High School. He was given no possibility of parole. An appeals court partially upheld the gag order against former President Donald Trump in his federal election subversion case. That panel ruled Trump can be barred from talking about about witnesses or prosecutors. That gag order, however, does not apply to comments Trump makes about special counsel Jack Smith, which is different from the original order issued in a D.C. district court. And the season of giving often comes with stealing. San Antonio police are warning people to beware of porch pirates as the holidays get closer. All right, Avery Everett sitting down with a local family who's finding hope after becoming victims. You have the, the gears that move in the back. 12 hours in. There's almost 4,000 pieces in this set. Leah Hernandez says she still has a lot left to build in this Lego set. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> While it may seem like they're just toys, to 14-year-old Hernandez, they're helping set up her future. Aerospace engineering is what I want to do. <laughs> but the week before her birthday, an important Lego set never made it past her front step. It was disappointing and heartbreaking in the moment. A porch pirate caught on camera stealing the Lego set and then skipping away. Her initial reaction was maybe they needed it more, Mom. The Hernandez family reported the stolen package to SAPD and the department warns these kinds of thefts are only expected to rise as the holidays near. The stolen set has still not been found. I hope it went to someone who like needed it. Leah is using this experience to push one school project along. She is raising money for kids uh, in first grade. It's something she started to fundraise long before this set was stolen. But now she's pushing to raise $7,500 through the SAISD Foundation to provide robot and Lego kits to other students. And it's an emotional effort for her entire family. Because in first and second grade, I didn't have those things all the time. <laughs> Even with one less set this season, Leah says she's determined to build something bigger. SAPD recommends if you're getting a package delivered this season to use a safe spot, either like a locker or a designated pickup location. If you want to help with Leah's project, we have on KSAT.com right now links to help and ways to donate with a hashtag. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 8.08, 66 degrees. After the break this holiday season, financial experts are warning consumers about holiday scams, what mm. the latest scam trends are, and what you can do to avoid it. And we have another crash to tell you about this one, I-10 and Woodlawn. Add it to the list that we have been following through the morning. As you can see, police lights on the screen. Traffic still flowing in that direction, though. Any more pop up, we will keep you posted. If you can, if you are traveling out and about today, try to avoid that area. That fog, that fog definitely leading to some moisture on the roads there. But Sarah Spivey is going to let us know when we can expect that full dissipation of the fog. And hey, we have a cold front coming in this weekend. Even going to see some freezing temps come early Monday morning. Sarah will explain all of that when we come back. As you continue your Christmas shopping this weekend, financial fraud and business experts are warning consumers and entrepreneurs to be careful when they get a text, email, or a deal that just seems too good to be true. A popular trend that is being seen lately is with small businesses, clients who place large orders but offer to pay with a gift card, credit card, or a billing address that doesn't match the shipping address. Some could be using a stolen card, experts advise to always double check with the client about the information given and do not click on any text or email links that are sent to you. It's funny, this time of year you see other parts of the country dealing with snow, dealing with blizzards. 
We just have incredible fog this morning. Fog this morning and guys, fine enough mist that it's actually causing folks to hydroplane on the highway. So I want to show you right now. This is I-10 eastbound at Woodlawn. So as you're coming into downtown, you can see that the exit ramp here is completely shut off because there was a rollover uh, vehicle. Vehicle rolled over and so they've got the highway kind of congested here on eastbound I-10 right at Woodlawn because again of this rollover crash. So sometimes what can happen is when you have this very fine mist, it lifts a layer of oil on the highway and that's what causes people to end up hydroplaning. So not only do you need to be careful as far as the fog goes, but also just watch the roads. They are damp in places. Here's where that accident that crashes along I-10 eastbound at Woodlawn before you get into downtown. And the fog is dense at the moment. Pretty much zero visibility around San Antonio just a few feet in front of you. Uh, half a mile visibility in Carrizo Springs, three mile visibility in Del Rio, three quarters of a mile visibility in Kerrville. We are seeing some improvement as we head throughout the rest of the morning as far as visibility goes, but we still are dealing with that mist and that fog. We're going to have that mist and fog for the next couple of hours, but by about 11 noon, that's when a front is going to move through and that'll help to clear skies. It's still going to be a warm afternoon. We'll get up to 77 degrees, but later on in the day, those winds are really going to kick up. Take a look at wind speeds at about four o'clock from the north at 20 miles per hour. That'll continue into the evening. We're going to have sustained winds at 20 to 25 miles per hour, but wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. That's a look at the future cast wind gusts here. This is 11 o'clock tonight, right before midnight. Future wind gusts of about 40 miles per hour. It is going to end up being a pretty breezy evening into the early morning tomorrow. Early tomorrow morning, we are going to be still looking at wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. That's when that colder air is going to filter in so that by tomorrow morning, even though temperatures will be near 40 degrees, it'll feel like it's in the 30s with the gusty winds. Now by the evening tomorrow in the afternoon, winds are going to calm. So the big story today is to really prepare for the windy conditions later on. The big story by Monday morning is going to be a freeze, a light freeze expected early Monday morning for us. We're going to have clear skies and calm winds. Before you worry about wintry precipitation, don't because this is going to be a dry forecast, but it is going to get chilly by Monday morning. Here's a look at the freeze possible on Monday from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. So before you get up early on Monday morning, 31 in Yavaldi, 32 in Rock Springs. It should stay above freezing in Del Rio and Eagle Pass. It could get down into the 20s in parts of the hill country. Gonzales, 31, Pleasanton right at freezing. And around San Antonio, just about everybody expected to see that light freeze Monday morning with uh, temperatures in the 20s for those in the hill country. So here's your weekend to do list today. Secure those outdoor decorations because again, the winds are going to pick up tonight. You don't want to be fishing for your Christmas decorations down the street tomorrow and then tomorrow you should prep for the light freeze on Monday morning. This is not a freeze that requires you to uh, deal with your pipes. This is more so bringing inside those potted plants and making sure to keep your pets warm. Now, Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about how we have a rain chance Wednesday through Friday. But for now, I just wanted to inform you about the windy conditions late tonight and that light freeze possible Monday morning. We'll be back with more news after the break. Nearly one out of every six adults has trouble hearing and those numbers of those developing hearing loss is growing fast. True, and for those who could really use a hearing aid and don't have one, well, that could change soon as over-the-counter hearing aids, they're becoming more and more available. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some recommendations and what you should know before you buy. It's frustrating constantly asking, can you repeat that? An over-the-counter hearing aid may be the solution. It's easier and more affordable than ever. If you have mild to moderate hearing loss, you don't necessarily need to go see a doctor or an audiologist to get one. 
you can actually just go to the store or go online and buy a pair. So where do you start? First, know that there are two kinds, preset and self-fitting. Preset OTCs are more affordable and they're generally simpler to set up and use. You can just stick them in your ear and go. But some are so simple that they offer little more than basic volume control. Consumer Reports worked with an audiologist to test 10 OTC hearing aids. Things like volume, frequency range, distortion, battery drain, and directional amplification. Here's what they found. At $99, the Audion Hearing Atom was the most affordable preset model they tested. But the only thing you can customize is the volume control. And that requires a tiny screwdriver. CR also found it created noisy distortion in loud environments. For about $450 more, they found the Lucid Engage a lot more versatile. It offers four distinct audio configurations. Self-fitting hearing aids are more expensive, but they're a really good choice if you want your hearing aid to be more tailored to your hearing loss, or if you want options like streaming music or calls. The Lexi Lumens were among the most affordable self-fitting hearing aids they looked at. You need to set them up by taking a short hearing test. CR found very little distortion in quiet or louder environments. Another good option, they said, is the Sony CRE E10. It's pricier at $1,300. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 822, 66 degrees. Today on a brand new episode of Texas Eats. Ooh, what do we, what do we got going on here? Is that fried sushi? I'm intrigued. Oh my gosh. So David Elder heads the newest location of El Remedio for some asada sushi. Oh, that's different. Right. So this is our arrachera roll. It has a steak arrachera, it has chile serrano inside, and it has a mozzarella cheese and avocado. All right, I'm gonna go for like this guy right here in the front. And then the sauce is on the Sriracha, side. Sriracha, you'll sauce and spicy mayo. Ooh, that one's like smoky. Y'all like spicy out here. Yes. This one has a serrano on the inside. Yeah. The mozzarella helps kind of balance out that spice, but I tell you what, you gotta be a spice lover to, to like. really appreciate it. Yes. And I like that, because I, I like a little bit of spice. We're in San Antonio, everybody likes a little spice out here. Everyone loves the spice. I'm in it. I'm in. Are you so, in? So it's a fried sushi roll. Yeah, something like that. Oh, can't be bad. Is that yeah, cheese? That's cheese. Oh, okay, yeah, that can't be bad. Yeah, I'll try it. Uh, of course. Yeah. All right, time now, 826, 66 degrees. Okay, before we head to break, a quick reminder that KSAT will be live streaming two high school eSports events today. SAMSAT will host an event including students from all over the area. Northside ISD will be hosting its fall championships. Both events happening this morning. You can watch them live on the BGC app, KSAT Plus or KSAT.com. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday. It is just about 8.30 this morning. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Happy Saturday. Happy Good morning. Saturday. And I gotta say, it has not been a happy Saturday for so many drivers out on the road this oh morning. Oh my gosh, yeah. We started our morning early and that fog was very dense. When we, uh, during the 6 a.m. show, Sarah, we saw several crashes because yeah. of that fog and the fog, it hasn't really gone away. Correct, and it's still dense. It's starting to lift a little bit, but drivers are going to have to contend early this morning with the fog and with a little bit of dampness on the roads too. Here's a look at some of that fog. This is 90 at Medio Creek, and you can see uh, the fog is really limiting visibilities out there across uh, San Antonio. We've had several crashes this morning, so check your route before you head out. Outside right now, as we look, there are some areas of mist on the camera. This is near the airport. This is very fine mist. It's not amounting to much, but it is causing some issues with dampness on the roads. So be very careful. Visibility is very low in San Antonio at the airport, less than a quarter of a mile, less than half a mile visibility in Castroville, half a mile visibility in Bernie. However, we are starting to see visibility improve for areas south of San Antonio, and we won't have to deal with the fog and the mugginess for long because on our doorstep is a cold front. Now this cold front has 
drier air behind it. And so that's going to help to sweep away the uh, muggy conditions out there right now. And eventually it will get cold. Temperatures are already below freezing in Lubbock right now. We'll be cold by tomorrow morning. So today again, a warm day for us. But the big thing to keep in mind is this morning, dense morning fog tonight getting windy. We'll have gusts up to 40 miles per hour. So take today to secure those outdoor Christmas decorations. And then by Monday morning, we will have a brief light freeze. I'll tell you what that means and which neighborhoods will be getting that light freeze. Plus, we'll talk about rain chances in the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. And obviously traffic, a big talk of the morning. So if your weekend plans include driving around 1604, well, it's going to be deja vu. You can expect some closures. Traffic Authority RJ Marquez breaks down what you need to know. Well, it's going to be another busy weekend on the northwest side for our drivers. We're talking about holiday shopping and all sorts of things happening around the rim. But something that you need to know before you head out on the roads this weekend, we're going to see more work being done. The 1604 and I-10 interchange and that expansion area. So I'm going to move out of the way, kind of show you exactly what we're working with here. The west and eastbound lanes will be closed in the area for about a three mile stretch. So right now what you're looking at is the westbound lanes. The main lanes will be closed from the Bitters Road exit ramp to Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. Ramp. The eastbound lane closure as we move to this other graphic right here showing you the eastbound lanes. Uh, that closure will extend from the Vance Jackson Road exit ramp to the Bitters entrance ramp. That's about three and a half miles. And that is not all. The exit ramp off I-10 West 10 leading to eastbound Loop 1604 will be closed as well as the Cloverleaf exit from I-10 East to eastbound 1604. So these closures are going to take place starting at 9 p.m. on Friday and they're going to last through 5 a.m. on Monday. So take caution if you are in the area. Now off-duty officers will also be there in that area to help direct traffic. Make sure you guys stay safe and have a good one. Thank you, RJ. Now it'll take even longer for us to know more about the law enforcement response to Rob Elementary School, the shooting that ended with so many students and teachers shot and killed. So this comes after the Department of Public Safety appealed the judge's ruling to release the records from the shooting. For more than a year, more than a dozen media outlets, including us here at KSAT, we've been fighting to access the video footage, things like call logs and other investigative materials. Now, this appeal it will keep these records tied up in the court system for months or even years. Aside from the need for transparency, this move could actually block attempts at retribution for families of the victims and some of the survivors who filed the 1983 claim. That claim is brought against government organizations, agencies, and employees who did not act in a manner in which they're supposed to. Now, those claims have a statute of limitations for two years, which ends in five months. But without this key access to key details and evidence from the day of the shooting, well, those claims, they have a difficult path moving forward. All of the evidence that supports their claims is kept under wraps. Those families will not have the evidence they need due to DPS choosing to appeal. The attorney we heard from says the material that has been released through leaks since the shooting may not even meet the burden of proof that's needed. A California federal judge has outlawed the separation of families at the southern border for at least the next eight years. U.S. District Judge Dana Sabra is blocking the resumption of the Trump era policy that separates those families on the sole purpose of deterring immigration. It also ends a long running lawsuit between the Department of Justice and the American Civil Liberties Union, which sued over 5,000 migrant children that were separated from their parents under the Trump administration. Well, back here at home, we've been following the possibility of a CPS rate hike and all well, the results are in. You're going to be paying more to keep your lights on after the San Antonio City Council approved the second CPS energy rate hike in the last two years. The four and a quarter percent bump to gas and electric base rates will give CPS another $85 million every year. Now, the utility says it plans to use that money to replace aging technology, keep up with growth of our city, and prepare to transition a coal plant to natural gas. You know, CPS has made a convincing case. Uh, I don't think this is a matter of if, it's a matter of how. So you can expect this rate increase that should add about $5 to your bill to start in February. City leaders are now asking if minority and women owned businesses should continue to get preferential treatment when it comes to some city contracts. Right now, about a quarter of the city contracts are 
low our non low bid and minority and women and women owned businesses get extra consideration for those they have for years and now that data shows women and minority owned small businesses are doing well some think it's time to change the policy but not everyone agrees by design and by legal requirement we have to start taking the training wheels off i think it looks like we're going backwards we're, we're, we're going in the wrong direction City leaders were supposed to vote on this issue next Tuesday, but leaders decided to wait until next year. Now to the new details emerging about that school shooting at UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has the latest and what President Joe Biden had to say after his visit to the campus yesterday. This morning, chilling 911 calls made immediately after shots rang out on the University of Nevada, Las Vegas campus. How many shots have you heard? Like, like five. I'm hiding under my desk. I closed my door. It's locked. Have you heard anything else before or after? I heard some screaming. One terrified caller telling 911 she thinks she saw the shooter, identified by police as former East Carolina University professor, 67-year-old Anthony Polito. No. I just saw a man I usually don't see on the fourth floor, about 6'4", heavy set, white man. This, as we are now learning more about the two university police officers who were able to confront the shooter on Wednesday, seen here on surveillance video. The suspect wearing a long coat, pursuing one officer, who then turns and opens fire, killing the suspect. Authorities identifying the officers as Detective Nate Drum and Officer Damian Garcia. These two officers or heroes, they kept the worst from becoming a bloodbath. Three people were killed in the shooting, another still in the hospital fighting for his life. Authorities also now releasing the name of the third deceased victim, Dr. Naoku Takamaro, an associate professor in the Department of World Languages and Cultures. Naoko was frail physically. However, she was lion-hearted in kindness. Lion-hearted in generosity, lion-hearted in humanity. President Biden meeting the UNLV president and members of the student body while in Vegas for an infrastructure investments announcement. This is not normal, and we can never let it become normal. And that was ABC's Jacqueline Lee reporting. Time now, 838, 66 degrees. Tickets are now on sale for Fort Sam's. 323rd Army Band Holiday Festival. After the break, a sneak peek of this year's performance. Also, shouts to Army because of the Army Navy game happening later today. And, oof, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Not much to look at right now. We know traffic has been pretty chaotic to say the least to start your morning. Things are going to be popping up. We're going to let you know. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey with full forecast. Good morning and welcome back and kick off this holiday season with Fort Sam Zone 323rd Army Band Holiday Festival. Are you Army or Navy? You can't do that to me. I'm putting I'm you on the spot, I am right? San Antonio Military City, USA. Right. How about that? So she's Army. Got it. <laughs> Tiffany Huertas visited the band to get a sneak peek of this year's performance and a look at the band's history. It's a building with a lot of history and a special place for musicians. Inside the Fort Sam Houston Theater, practice is underway. We practice almost every day. For U.S. Army Sergeant Eric Finkelstein, music has always been part of his life. I've been a musician since I was nine years old. My dad is a musician. He was a choir director and he's also a guitar player. Finkelstein is a bass player with Fort Sam's own 323rd Army Band, and they are getting ready for their upcoming holiday festival, Joy to the World. It's really, it's really eclectic. It's concert band setting with a few pop things, and then of course we got the rock band portion, which is obviously my favorite. Every band member brings something unique. We have people from all states, uh, lots of different backgrounds. The 323rd Army Band is turning 80 years old next year. Uh, we've been at Fort Sam Houston since 1947, uh, so it's, we've been here for a while, and we've been doing these holiday concerts for many, many years. Conductor of the band, Chief Warrant Officer 2, Ryan Knight, says there will be many surprises at this year's holiday festival. So we got si almost 60 musicians, professional musicians, 20 to 25 of those are actually volunteers, they're friends. So this is Fort Sam's own 
holiday festival with friends. Finkelstein can't wait to perform for the community. It's always been a real source of uh, expressing myself and uh, feels like an extension of myself when I'm playing the bass. Like when I'm on stage and playing my bass, anything goes. Tickets to the festival are going fast. The free event is taking place on Sunday at 2 p.m. at the McAllister Auditorium on the campus of the San Antonio College. For more information, visit KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, for people out and about today, Sarah, is this fog going to linger? No. It okay. is okay, good. <laughs> so good, good, good. Great answer. It's not going to linger, but we are going to see the fog until uh, about noon, and that's when skies are really going to clear. But that fog has been a trouble a spot for many areas. Take a look at 37 at the Alamo Dome. A beautiful picture here of the Tower of the Americas, and you can see that the top of that tower cut off by that fog. We've got areas of mist and drizzle out there too this morning, so please use caution on the roads. We've seen several crashes this morning. But fog is starting to improve in many places. You can see that visibility is back up to five miles in Del Rio. At one point, it was down to a quarter of a mile. It's back up to seven miles in Kerrville. Again, at one point, down to a quarter of a mile. But still around San Antonio, we've got areas of dense fog. Down to a quarter of a mile at the airport. Down to a mile and a half at New Braunfels. Down to two miles on the west side of Port S.A. And down to less than a mile in Castroville and in Bernie. So use caution this morning. We are going to see that fog get swept away with the arrival of a cold front. Take a look, it's snowing in the panhandle of Texas right now. Here's where that front is. It will eventually bring us colder air, but at first you're going to notice the drier air moving in. The drier air is starting to work its way across central Texas and will be here shortly in San Antonio by noon. So when we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, dense fog out in some mist out there right now, still cloudy at 10. That front will move through close to 11 o'clock and that's when skies will clear in the afternoon. It's going to be sunny and it's not until the evening that it'll get windy, but in the afternoon we'll have temperatures still in the upper 70s, so it is going to be a little on the warm side, but with low humidity. Then tonight we'll see those winds really pick up and it is going to be a very gusty night, so take some time today to secure those Christmas inflatables. Here's how windy it will be. We'll be seeing wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour tonight, even on tomorrow up to 30 mile per hour in the morning. I have named this snowman inflatable Frosty. This is Frosty's wind meter. If you do not secure Frosty, he will be all the way at the North Pole by tomorrow morning. So take some time. Make sure to secure those Christmas decorations outdoors, those lightweight Christmas decorations. Then our attention turns to our first light freeze of the season. This is a look at morning lows. And by Monday morning, we're going to be briefly below freezing in San Antonio. We're talking one to two hours below freezing in San Antonio. So this is not the kind of weather where you'll need to to prep the pipes or anything like that. It's not going to get that cold. We are not going to see any wintry precipitation. This is a dry forecast for us by Monday morning, but there are many neighborhoods that will be seeing their first freeze of the season. Not necessarily Del Rio. It'll be close to freezing, but 31 in Yavaldi, 31 in Hondo, 32 in Pleasant and Kennedy. 28 in Kerrville. So I do think that areas in the hill country and the higher elevations could get down into the 20s like Bernie, Comfort, Bulverde, those areas, even New Braunfels could get down into the 20s. But around San Antonio, we'll have that light freeze. So all of our locations in pink here, make sure to cover and bring in sensitive vegetation. You'll want to bring in potted plants. You'll want to bring in tropical plant plants. You'll want to cover citrus trees and remember your pets too. make sure they are warm. Bring them inside. Make sure they have a warm place to stay. And then by Wednesday and th through Friday, rainfall will be possible in San Antonio. So we are going to have a mix of weather. We'll be looking at windy conditions tonight, that light freeze on Monday morning, and then our eyes turn to the possibility for rain Wednesday through Friday. I mentioned earlier we had had a lot of uh, crashes around San Antonio early, earlier. I'll take a closer look at the traffic coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 849, 66 degrees. Speaking of those crashes. Yeah, we're going to take a closer look at it. You can see that fog starting to lift like Sarah talked about. It was way more dense earlier this morning. That's 35 at 90. We see no incidents there earlier. We saw one at the Y. 
Uh, we saw one at 90s in couples. Those have all cleared up since. If anything does pop up, like we said, we're coming back. Sarah will take a closer look. Now let's take a closer look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, six, two, five, fireball six. Daily four, nine, one, nine, six, fireball six. Cash five, three, six, 11, 13, 34, mega millions. Jackpot, Don, do you know the jackpot? He doesn't. I, I think it's about 400 million. Ooh, what a day. I believe between 300 and 400. Hey, that's a lot of money. 21, 26, 53, 66, 70, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier 3. We'll be right back. Well, don't forget, we are taking part in the Salvation Army's Parade of Kettles competition. We are trying to raise $2,000 for families in need this holiday season. Grab your phones. Open your camera app, scan this QR code. It's going to take you to our website where you can find a link to donate. All right, this year, our team captain, one of the newest reporters on the team, Danielle Ibarra, and she's been out at some of the locations already with our KSAT Red Kettle today. Patty Santos out at La Quintera from noon to 4 p.m. asking for donations. So if you're out there, if you're shopping, doing that holiday Christmas shopping, make sure to stop by, see her. Donations are being accepted through <laughs> Christmas Eve. And if you want to see where your money will go if you donate or wonder how it will help, our web article has a great breakdown of just how much money it takes to help someone in need, even if you can only donate $10. So go ahead and scan that QR code, check it out, and our Red Kettle campaign trying to raise $2,000 for the Salvation Army. All right. It's funny because I think we did it last year. And Sarah Spivey was actually amazing at getting donations. We were out there hanging out and playing, playing Christmas carols with a guitar. She was doing that. We did live for the noon and the nine and people love Sarah Spivey. I know. Yeah. Needless to say, y'all got some donations she, for that cause. She guy was just there, a moral support chair over here. All right, time now, just about 8.55, 66 degrees. The makers of McCormick Seasonings have a new prediction on what oh. spice is gonna be on the menus in 2024, what it is, and why. That's coming up next. Okay, for some of us, we've been using tamarindo for years, generations, but it's having its time to shine. It's gonna have a breakout in 2024. Top selling maker of seasonings and spices, McCormick and Company predicts that the flavor will dominate menus next year. So if you don't know, the spice comes from a tree commonly grown throughout Mexico, Africa, Asia, India. Go for it. It's a tangy sweet flavor that can be added to potato chips, ice mm. cream, and even coffee mm. or fruit. McCormick says it chose the spice because it encompasses what it saw for this year. Tangy and sour foods modernize versions of regional foods and over the top takes on childhood favorites. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing, we've yeah. been using tamarindo in San Antonio for a long time. People are just finding out it's about everywhere. it. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, the secret is out. <laughs> Time now, 8.57, 66 degrees. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 9 a.m. It is Saturday, December 9th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us, starting Good your morning. weekend with us. Happy Saturday. We are back. So excited to be here. And it has been kind of chaotic to start the morning. Oh my gosh, Sarah, we had that dense fog throughout the morning, causing some chaos on the roadways. It's starting to clear up, though. It is. We are starting to see sunshine in the hill country. So the clearing skies right on our doorstep. I want to start with a look at the pollen count today. No major change here. Molds and mountain cedar are the only allergens present and they are low. Here's a look at a uh, 90 at couples right now. Earlier there was a bad crash at 90 eastbound at couples, but things have since cleared, but you can still see areas of fog and there are even areas of mist and drizzle. This is a look at the airport, a little bit of mist right now at the airport and temperatures are generally in the mid 60s, 65 in San Antonio, but it's already 70 in Seguin. What I want you to look at here is the visibility down to a quarter of a mile at the airport. So dense fog at the airport, but you look out toward Kerrville visibility is vastly different and improving up to seven 
seven miles and it's a lot colder in Kerrville and in Bernie. That's because a front is moving through and you can see that it's clear up in the hill country. A little bit of fog in the valleys, but those that will fog will dissipate. We are going to be seeing sunshine very shortly here in San Antonio within the next 30 minutes to an hour as these clouds continue to push south and the fog starts to lift. So the morning fog, fog will be clearing. We'll be up to 77 degrees today for the high. It's going to still be a warm Saturday, but with that front moving through later on tonight, that's when we'll see wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. Make sure to secure those outdoor Christmas decorations today. That Those are some gusty winds. Then by tomorrow, a cold morning at 41 and an afternoon high of only 60 degrees under sunny skies. So a chilly day tomorrow. Then by Monday morning, our first freeze of the season. I'll tell you what you need to prepare for with that first freeze coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. The latest around the San Antonio former spur, Josh Primo. Remember, this was a case we followed very closely and a big update. Primo will not face indecent exposure charges after a former team psychologist accused him of doing that several times just last year. In a statement from the Bear County District Attorney's Office, they explained saying that there was insufficient evidence to prove the allegations. Now, they went on to say that their office must be able to prove each and every element of a criminal offense beyond a reasonable doubt. And they said, plain and simply, they don't have that evidence. In your morning headlines, an appeals court partially upheld the gag order against former President Donald Trump in his federal election subversion case. That panel ruled Trump can be barred from talking about witnesses or prosecutors. That gag order, however, does not apply to comments Trump makes about special counsel Jack Smith, which is different from the original order issued in the D.C. District Court. All right, and sticking with politics, Republican National Committee says GOP presidential candidates, well, they can take part in any debate they want to. Now, the RNC says it doesn't have to have a party-sponsored presidential debate scheduled for January, so candidates can participate in other ones if they'd like. Now, the decision comes after several candidates criticized the exclusivity pledge. ABC News set to host a debate in New Hampshire just days after the Iowa caucus. The NCAA says it wants to split the highest level of collegiate sports by dividing Tier 1 to directly compensate athletes. So NCAA President Charlie Baker says a split would also address disparities in school resources. He says colleges in the subdivision would work on new rules for the group and they'd have to provide funding for at least half their eligible athletes. If adopted, the new rules could have an impact on a wide range of policies from scholarships, transfers, and name, image, and likeness revenue. All right, new research from the research group Japan 101 revealed that the Houston Texans are the cheapest NFL team to support as a fan. Data shows that fans spend on average $380 for tickets, food, and merchandise at NRG Stadium. So what about our other professional football team here in the state of Texas? Well. The Cowboys placed 28 on the list. So <clears throat> Go just, Cowboys. just to put that in perspective, <laughs> that means that they're the third most expensive team to support. So on average, we gave you the Texans average. On average, a fan for the Cowboys will spend $900 a game. And you're probably asking, hey, who is the most expensive team to be a fan of in the NFL? Well, the answer, the Raiders, with an average of $1,300 spent by their fans. And you have to consider new stadium, just moved on to Vegas, so I guess I can understand it. But as a Cowboys fan, have you been to a Cowboys game recently? No, but I've I've been to AT&T stadium. stadium. Not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. You know what? If but you I wanna... think it's worth it. You know, being a Cowboys fan, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> it can be okay. difficult. All right. <laughs> well, next time we it. go to a Cowboys game, you can pay for it. Okay. Uh, time now, just about 9.06, 66 degrees. Well, have you seen butterflies flying around? Yes, I have several monarchs still munching on native pollinator flowers. Scientists are saying something different about the migration this year. We'll take a look. That's up next. And it has been wild weather to start the morning. That fog looking like it's starting to roll out a little bit. It was super dense to start the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey what the rest of the day is going to look like.